Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we are taking a look back at everyone's favorite tier 10 techline Italian battleship, the Colombo. Now, the Colombo was introduced all the way back in update 10.3, so we're literally one full patch and some change away from the Colombo's introductory date. So I thought it'd be pretty interesting to take a look back and see how she's doing one full patch later. And obviously this is a ship, if you don't know, that is very uh, gimmicked and tuned to close-in fighting. As you look at my Columbo and the way I have it set up, the ship base has an 18.6 kilometer maximum main battery gun range, which is like actually fairly low-ish for a tier 8 battleship. And this is with the reload module, of course, you can't equip the range module. But then you're talking about having a ship with a 36 second reload time at tier 10. But we'll get all into that in a moment. So the Columbo was released all the way back in 10.3. She's geared toward close in engagement. And along with uh, the other Italian battleships, she was actually designed with the commander rework in mind. And one particular skill that we all know and love, which was Deadeye, of course, which meant that when you were out of detection range, meaning that an enemy ship was not within your ship's detection range, you got a 10% boost to your ship's main battery gun accuracy, which was a very handy boost to get. And of course, we had the whole shoot, what was it, two, three, four, five months? I think about four months that Dead Eye was around and about and battleships were just camping in the back and Dead Eye was just kind of nutty on most battleships. So she was designed with that in mind and again like the other Italian battleships were that gimmick was removed and well th that skill was removed and most of the other Italian battleships got buffs to their dispersion in order to compensate for this but Colombo never did she never received a buff to her dispersion she received a one second reload time buff and a slight turret traverse buff but since then she hasn't been touched so let's take a look at how the ship's doing today so, the Colombo, let's talk, uh, start talking with her armor. So, the ship is actually incredibly well armored. I mean, it's not like Kremlin well armored, or how some of the super ships are armored, but for what it is, it's a pretty darn well armored battleship. She, of course, has a 32mm bow, then she has a 60mm icebreaker bow. Her main belt is 375mm. Her stern does not have any type of additional plating or anything over it. Her bow and stern deck is 32mm. Her mid deck is 50mm. Her upper ar uh, belt armor is 70mm. And she does have these 150mm sections where the secondary barbettes are armored at. And if you take away her exterior armor, her citadel is below the waterline. And she does have a turtleback citadel as well. So. It's not impossible to citadel this ship, but it's very unlikely that you're going to do it at close range. At longer ranges, it is very much possible. So she's pretty well armored there. Now, for her survivability, she has 89,900 hit points, which is on the lower side for a tier 10 battleship. Now, it's not as low, obviously, as something like the Conqueror, but it is on the lower side. Again, she does have some, fa some fantastic armor, so she's got to lose something somewhere for that. And she has 31% torpedo damage reduction, which eh, it's on the lower side for tier 10 BB battleship um, torpedo uh, damage reduction, but again, not the end of the world either. Now her main battery guns, again, she has 16 15-inch guns that reload if you take the reload mod in 32.6 seconds. Without that, it's a 36-second reload time. Which, mm, that, that's long. Even though it does have 16 guns, that, that's quite a long reload time. Her 180 turn time with the build that I'm running, which does include the uh, Grease the Gear skill, is 36.7 seconds. And the rear turrets on the Colombo do 360, and that is such a nice thing to have on this ship. With a maximum range of 18.9 kilometers, and they said 18.6 earlier, it's 18.9. I mean, it's 300 more meters, but... It is what it is. Now, her Sigma, for having 16 15-inch guns, is down to 1.5, which 
isn't great, but again, with the amount of guns, the Sigma does make up for it. I'm sorry, the the sheer volume of fire that you're sending down range does make up for it. So, eh, it doesn't feel too bad when you are firing. Now, again, these guns can use sap, which is fantastic. The sap does a maximum damage of 12,500, which is, of course, if you set it or something, which is possible with sap. You have to hit something that's fairly lightly armored like a cruiser, but it can be done. And the sap can pin 96 millimeters of armor. So that's also very nice. It comes up the tubes at 880 meters a second, which is also very nice as well. Her AP is nothing to be slept on either. This is Italian AP. Does a maximum damage of 12,000 and comes out the tubes at 850 meters a second. And this is really punchy AP. It's, I mean, if you played the room, if you played any of the, the other Italian battleships and have used the AP, it packs one hell of a punch. And that's no different here with the Colombo. So when you get hit with these guns, when she has AP loaded, it does feel like you've been hit with a much larger gun than 15 inch guns. And then again, the Colombo has 16 of these guns on her as well. So yeah. Now, Generally, the, the rule of thumb with the Italian battleships is that you keep sap loaded, unless you're sure you can sit it or something, then you go ahead and load AP. So, if you're shooting at a battleship, I'd keep sap loaded, unless they give you completely flat broadside and you know you're going to have time to load AP, get it in the tubes, and shove into their citadel and get citadel hits, then you'd load AP. So, if you were, for example, closing in on brawling distance and you're about to have a drive-by, for sure, switch over to AP, fire the tubes that you got loaded with sap, to get that get that AP loaded up for the drive-by, and blap them in their citadel with sap, I'm sorry, with AP, and delete the ship. It's got some really good guns, despite the, uh, the dispersion and range. It does feel pretty nice, and we'll talk more about how she plays in Modern World Warships here in a second. She does have secondary guns, but... These secondaries, unlike the um, da, 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 the Verdi, do not get sapped. They fire HE, and they're so small. They're 90 millimeter guns, so they only pin 15 millimeters of armor, which at tier 10, you're actually shattering on some DD, so it's really not worth mentioning. She does have six of the 152 by three millimeter guns, so you get a fair amount of those, and those are a little bit better. They can pin 25, mm, mil, 25 millimeters of armor, but again, it's not really worth building two with only six mounts that can pin a decent amount at your tier, so it's not really worth mentioning. The 90 millimeters is more there to contribute to the AA, which uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Actually, right now, uh, AA is fairly lackluster. It does only go out to 4.6 kilometers, so most carriers don't really care about your AA because they're in and out of it before anything happens and like the Nakamov really doesn't care because <laughs> it can literally drop from outside of your AA range for anything even start shooting at it. Maneuverability the ship with the speed flag equipped does only go 31.1 knots so she's a little on the slower side for a tier 10 and she has a turning circle race of 960 meters and a rush shift time of 18 seconds. Concealment with a commander with consume an expert and with the module it gets down to 14 kilometers which isn't great isn't terrible at tier 10 it's a little on the larger side considering you have both the module and the uh, skill equipped but there is something to help out the Columba with with its concealment and that's in its box o gimmicks so for consumables she gets of course damage con that's active for 16.5 seconds which is fairly nice then you get a heal that Heals 539 HP per second, active for 30 point seconds, and reload in 76 seconds. You get five of those with the build that I'm running. And then you get Exhaust Smoke Generator, which is an absolute godsend for this ship. So this is active for 45 seconds. It disperses in 10 seconds, so once you've sailed through it, essentially. And it reloads in 171 seconds, and you get three charges of that. Then a choice of fighter or spotter. So that smoke screen is fantastic for when you're in a situation where you don't want to be seen. As long as there's no radar around, which if you're in a battleship, you're generally, you know, 12, 13-ish kilometers away when you're close at tier 10. So you really don't have to worry about that too, too much unless you're pushing, and then that can be a bit of an awkward situation. But it's great. It's great for when you need to turn around. In most battleships, you got to wait to go uh, undetected until something leaves your detection range, and it could be a DD that you don't know is there, and you can't turn because 
while there's three battleships waiting for you to turn and that DD's keeping you spotted. With the Columbo, you just pop that smoke screen, you can turn around and disengage as need be. It's also useful for pushing. You'd be surprised how many players don't realize there is a 31 knot smokescreen the size of a battleship going toward them because you're not spotted and they don't get the notification that you're spotted. So many times that it's been a very useful uh, maneuver in the Columbo and it's great for that too. You smoke up, you don't get detected, they don't get the spotted notification, then you pop up next to them and say hello and then delete their ship. It's a wonderful, wonderful time when it does work. Alright, so how is the Columbo today? Well, in the background right now, you're watching one of the better matches I had during the night when I was playing to get uh, footage for this video. And I, I don't come number one of the team or anything like that, but the Columbo does perform very well given how this game generally kind of goes. This is not a super typical tier 10 game because one side doesn't just roll over the other side instantly. I had several of those before I had this match. This was a pretty good game. But as you can see for a lot of the match I'm firing on the edge of my range having to use my spotter aircraft to get the range out a little bit further to where I have the ability to even reach out there and try to touch some of those ships that are hanging back um, as tier 10 ships do so often. Having that 18.9 kilometer range or 36 second reload time really really hurts this ship in terms of trying to stay relevant in a match. You have to play the Columbo a lot a lot closer than you'd probably feel comfortable in a tier 10 game with a tier 10 battleship most times. And of course you do have the smoke to kind of help you there, but there's just many a case where the match is just so far apart that you really can't get in the fight at all because the, the ships are sitting at 19, 20 kilometers and unless you have the spotter up you can't even reach out and attempt to touch them and it's not like the ship's gonna be drilling targets at that range either because of the dispersion that the ship has which isn't great once you get out past 15 kilometers but like I've mentioned beforehand the ability to just be able to reach out and attempt to do something attempt to take a couple pot shots at ships at 21 22 kilometers at tier 10 is very very important there's many a case where a ship is one or two hits away from being taken out if you could get your battleship's guns in range or your ship's guns in range and just potentially just hit him with a shell or two to get him out of the match that's what you need to do and the Columbo can't do that and that's in that situation that's not in the many 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 a game that I'm sure you guys have had where the match no one gets within 15, 16, 17, 18 kilometers of each other, let alone the other battleships and such that you can shoot at. Now, when you can get in range and make the ship work, the ship does perform very well. SAP is an absolute godsend to the ship. It means that when you do get in range, if you know where to aim on enemy ships, which on enemy battleships, if it's anything like an American battleship, a German battleship, Japanese battleship, or any high tier ship that has a lot of superstructure, aim for that superstructure and you're going to chunk it for like 1920k a salvo, which is absolutely mental for a single salvo just hitting superstructure. Now, of course, too, that superstructure is obviously going to get fairly saturated pretty darn fast doing 20k a pop to it. So once that superstructure does run out of hit points, then, you know, there there goes your easy form in the ship. But obviously, again, with the ability to pin 96 millimeters of armor, you can pin other parts of the ship fairly easily. Again, if you know the armor layout, obviously the main belt's off limits to sap, but the bow, the stern, areas of the ship that you know that you can pin, aim for that, and you'll chunk for 10k, 15k, 19k. It's pretty ridiculous. And uh, when you do come, when it does come time to shooting that main battery belt, you do have the Italian AP to fall back on and punch him pretty good like that. So the ship can perform well when you get in range, which the ideal range for the Columbo is like 14 kilometers-ish in, because again, the sap and the accuracy at that range is quite fearsome, and then when you get really close, you can really switch over to AP and start to do some real damage. And what's really great about that turret setup is that you can keep your bow pointed toward the enemy ship if you're pushing them, and you don't have to 
either wait for your turrets to do the full loop around to finally show up on the other side when either you need to angle a certain way or you need to keep your guns on target as they're uh, selling across your bow. It's so easy just to, you know, just wait <laughs> the very few seconds it takes for turret 3 and 4 to turn and get on target. It, it's fantastic. It's a, definitely a highlight of the ship. Uh, the front turrets don't 360, so when you are kiting, it is going to take them a little while longer to get on target. But, um... With the turret rotation time, with Grease the Gears, 36 seconds this isn't a very long time to wait anyway, so it's not terrible. But again, it's such an, so, 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 so nice and such an advantage to have those number 3 and 4 turrets be 360 turrets. So, how has she done for myself in the current meta? So in the current long range meta, she's actually managed to perform surprisingly well. This really surprised me when I went and looked at my average damage in the... In the Colombo, it's well north of the uh, player's average damage in the Colombo. My average damage in the Colombo is like 110,000 damage, which is pretty darn good for the ship. Average-wise across uh, the North American server, she's, she's sitting at around 87,000 average damage, which is literally right in the middle of the current tier 10 ships in terms of average damage, which is pretty surprising to me. Because she's still a fairly new ship. She only has 191,000 battles played in her on the North American server, which is on the lower half. And usually when the ship just comes out, uh, they're normally like way above in terms of um, win rate and average damage and such. Now, it has, of course, been a year, so she's had time to calm down a little bit. But I do suspect that a lot of that is from just the way the meta is. A lot of players are very reluctant to push in and um, get in there and get within her effective range because of, again, the current meta. But if you know what you're doing, if you use the smoke screen, use it to get close or use it to disengage, it, it's such, again, a nice thing to know that, hey, look, I can push in if it gets too spicy. As long as there's no radar ships on this side of the map, I can just smoke up and I can just leave. Or I can push in. I know I can cross that gap where those battleships on this side of the map would normally have my broadside to shoot at, but I can smoke up, cross that gap, get within effective range, and start to go to town. It's such a nice thing to have that smoke screen. I think if you use it either more aggressively or kind of as a fallback card, you can do very well in the Colombo. And again, SAP is great for lightly armored targets. Cruisers, heavy cruisers, battleships, uh, extremities, and superstructure they're going to just get melted by this stuff. It's not uncommon that you chunk a cruiser for half of its health and you only landed like nine of your 16 shells on target. It's pretty nutty when a majority of these shells do connect. Now, destroyers, unfortunately, they had to tone down the damage that the sap does to destroyers because if it had the normal calculations, you would literally be evaporating DDs with like four shells so it's understandable why they had to tone that down sap is still the preferred ammo you want to use when shooting destroyers because you, you will be doing slightly more to them than you normally would with ap so it is what it is and again you would be literally thanos snapping dds if it wasn't that so overall the columbos she's held up pretty well i think the meta is slightly unfavorable to her but thanks to the smoke screen if you know how to use it and take advantage of it it can still perform well in today's meta but you are just going to inevitably have some of those matches especially with the super ships now where both sides just sit at 20 plus kilometers and staring at each other and nothing happens for a lot of the game and you only do like 50,000 damage but that's not exclusive to the Colombo. There's several other tier 10s that, that happens to, and unfortunately, in today's World of Warships. So, guys, she's still a solid choice in my mind, especially if you do like to play a little bit closer. The smoke screen's very nice. Armor's very nice. Sap is, again, almost a mistake. Well, no, it, 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 Sap was a mistake <laughs> in my mind. So, she's still a solid pick in my mind, guys. Hope you guys have a wonderful Wednesday. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. One way to 35,000 subs, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Again, hope you guys have a wonderful week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.